FTD fam, what's happening? So you guys have been blowing up my inbox on Instagram, sending me links and messages and suggestions for videos for me to react to. And this is one of them. This is a video from the channel Jubilee, actually probably one of my favorite channels on YouTube, but I haven't seen this video yet. It's about do all Muslims think the same? And that's a question that I have, like obviously no, no two people from my religion thinks the exact same, but I wanted to know what are the, some, the differences in the thought process and the ideologies of Muslims and we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna take a look at this video and then I'm gonna share my thoughts and comments at the end. Hey, good humans. Welcome to another episode of Spectrum. Good this humans. Hello, <laughs> I'm Ian and uh, stick around at the end. We're gonna talk a little bit with you guys. Believing men and believing women, same level. No, no, disagree. I have, I have in the court of law, the no. Quran explicitly states I'm sorry. two female witnesses I'm carry sorry. the weight of one male. And I'm that's sorry. why I stood over there. Wow, okay, all right, this is gonna get interesting. Spectrum. Six Muslims. I pray five times a day. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> I wish I was there with you guys. <laughs> like it's honestly, it just gets really hard. Like it's just five times a day and it's like spread throughout the day. We all live like young professional lives and it gets kind of in the way. And... Um, mm. If I could quantify it, I'm averaging about three out of five prayers. I think I will find myself in prayer more when I'm in desperation. It's not something that's subjective. I know we should be all praying as a requirement. Uh... I just want to say it takes a lot of guts to be honest and say that. I sure. honestly believe that if you feel it in your heart that you have a strong relationship with God, God will have mercy on you with whatever you're dealing with, so. Being on this line doesn't mean it's like a piece of cake exactly. to do the five daily prayers. It is a struggle, it's a challenge. I was working in a corporate environment where I could not comfortably find a space, so I'd have to go pray in the car, or in the parking lot. So it, it is a challenge, but yeah. Islam promotes violence. Three, two, one. So everybody's on the strongly disagree except him hmm. we're not allowed to cut down trees during war we're not allowed to hurt children and mothers we're not allowed to hurt our own prisoners and when people associate terrorism something so disgusting with islam it hurts me because isis targets muslims more than they target anybody else and in the age of google there's no excuse like if you don't know that islam means peace islam means surrender being a muslim is one who submits their will to god how is that violent like at the end of the day i feel like media is the one that has that hand and that stronghold causing folks to be that way or think that way I guess I literally listened to the prompts, does Islam promote violence? And I'm only speaking not from my personal perspective, but just from trying to understand how discussions about this religion can be used to defame it, to justify terrorism per se. When somebody says, and you know, for the record, kill a non-believer, let's acknowledge that sentence. And if we're gonna reach a conclusion and a solution with somebody who does think this way of us and our faith, we need to understand their argument thoroughly. But I, I disagree with what you just said. Please. I really do because I read the Quran every day as a practice. And not once in 2019 have I yet gotten to a verse about violence. All of them about mercy of God, turn to God, God is with you. To me, that's an emotional connection. Okay, I understand. That is an emotional connection to my creator. Sure. And I'm not gonna allow anybody to take that away. I'll take what you, well, the sentence, the statement that you Please. gave, kill the non-believers. At the time of the Holy Prophet, the Muslims were endangered. They were the Correct. minority, right? That's what I'm saying. So, but, but, that, it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that because we are in danger that whenever there's a non-believer, we kill them. No. What non-believer uh, refers to are like the Meccans or like the people that were actively going against Muslims right. and sure. trying to Body harm to us and stuff. Them. And I wanted this healthy okay. discourse. Yes, and because I Because I dwell with you. upon that other perspective. I, did, I didn't grow up proud of those verses because I didn't understand them. Yeah, and But now that times, I do have full understanding, I know that it's important to keep not a one-dimensional perspective, but not even accept the others, but thoroughly understand it. Hmm. Job okay. The job should be mandatory. Hmm. 
Whoa, okay, so the interesting you. spectrum. <laughs> I just feel like it's a woman's right to cover if she wants to. And to tell a woman what to do with her body is totally against our Islamic principles, so. You know, being a guy here, okay. I, just, I just made a really conscious decision to be like somewhat agree because people don't understand that hijab is like a concept as far as like, it's not just like the actual headscarf. Islam really promotes the idea of modesty and that's how you get closer to God. And if you feel like having a headscarf is a, is a way for you to get closer to God, then so be it. A hundred percent agree with that because it's not just a headscarf, it's your behavior, it's a personality, it's how you treat your friends and your neighbors. Yeah, for a lot of people, the process is build really? my courage, my how bravery, and my confidence, and, and then that? wear the scarf. For me, it was kind of reverse. I started with the scarf because I knew that I was not going to build that bravery unless I started wearing it. Because mm. when you put it on, you start acting different, you start acting nicer, you're kinder, because now you're representing your religion, your faith. You make me think really deep about that because I've been struggling. I've been struggling. I wore it when I was about 15, I tried it out. But it's been a struggle because internally, I want to be a better Muslimah that I'm going to represent to society before my outer side represents Islam. Mm. I face discrimination for my religion. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. So I'm not a traditional Muslim female, I don't wear the scarf. When I was younger, I'd be walking home from the masjid with my mom. She wears the hijab. This was before September 11th even happening. She would get teenagers in cars driving by, spitting on us, cursing wow. at us. She would always say, just brush it off. When you show that you're a Muslim in any way, people kind of, like, you, you get those glances every so often. But what happened was that um, after, like, all this, like, election things happened, it's funny, people who you grew up with, people who you knew your entire lives, are kind of looking at you a little differently. You know, so that kind of threw me off a little bit. I was like, wait a second, like, you know me. <laughs> I didn't think this would be an issue, you know? I personally have not experienced explicit discrimination. I conveniently can shave my beard and try to compensate almost, and it's sad to admit, but... Uh, I know it's not my job to create a comfort space for another person. However, I would say that I mean, if you do guys confront it explicitly, try to think of it as an opportunity to teach as opposed to reacting with uh, emotion. I think it also depends on what the encounter is. Like I had a beer bottle thrown at me after 9-11. I'm not going to go confront that person and be like, hey, let's build bridges. Right. Like it's not. <laughs> no. True. But if there's yeah. someone who's got a little bit of an it's attitude or you know, misconception, I'll work on that. Hmm. Women are equal to men. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. Different understandings of equality. Change mine. Wow. I had to think about it. So the reason I sit on agree and not strongly agree is that my my I'm understanding shocked. of human beings is that mo that women and men in general have um, different roles. You know, men cannot bear children; women do. In in Islam, there's no discriminatory thing. There's nothing that a man can do that a woman cannot. And I don't have to prove otherwise except to cite in the Quran when Allah addresses us believing men and believing women, same level. No, no, disagree. Same I have, level. I have, a, I have a I read the Quran verbatim. So it, it, you can't tell me. This, in the court of law, no. the Quran explicitly states I'm sorry. two female witnesses I'm carry sorry. the weight of one male, and I'm that's sorry. why I stood over there. I personally feel, and if it were up to me, it would be 50-50. There is no discrimination on my personal uh, bias, but. But why are I'm you again, standing there? I'm acknowledging that the Quran prescribes something here, right? No. In Islam, we do get equal opportunities. Okay. Scientifically, no, we're not equal. May because men can do things physically that we can't do. Women can do things that men can't do. Mm -hmm. So my question would be, what aspect equal are we discussing? Way. Personal yeah. belief versus Islamic belief versus societal belief. That's three different things. If I'm saying personally, I believe women can be greater than men. I believe women have... Islam says that. However, Thank you. Thank you. Islam promotes yeah. that <laughs> completely, yeah. You can be Muslim and part of the LGBTQ. Oh. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. It's such a broad question that I'm going to stand here just to be on the safe side. <laughs> I'm a contradictory human being. I pray with one hand and commit sin with the other. So I'm not in a position to be able to uh, tell somebody that they're excluded from a whole faith uh, if perhaps their faith in God is stronger than mine. Wow. Honest okay. answer. So you 
you can be um, anything and be a Muslim. But I guess, I guess the reason I'm standing here is because Islam is a lot about uh, the progression of the human race and about, um, about what is natural and what is not. Islam doesn't necessarily support like, the lifestyle of the LGBT community. However, they do support them as human beings. And that is something, like, um, you know, it's something that I've struggled with because um, they have my 100% love and support. I take a bullet for anybody. I don't care what their sexual orientation is. <laughs> My best friend, he's, um, he's gay, and we've had these conversations before, and um, he's told me that, you know what, Husna, I love you for you. I love you for everything that we've been through mm -hmm. together. I don't care what it is that you stand for, and that's, you know, it's, it's, it's really comforting to know that you don't have to support a lifestyle to support a human being, to love a human being, and to love people unconditionally. I love what you said, too, yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's why I'm here, because the, the prompt was, can you be LGBTQ and Muslim, and yes, yeah. you can be anything and Muslim. If we're going to get into the logistics of lifestyle practices and the, the core of scripture, yes, there are different lifestyles or things that are asked for in scripture, but there's nothing that says they are not welcome in the faith, they are not welcome in our houses of worship, they cannot pray, they cannot stand beside us, they don't fast, they are people. It's very hard, I would say, to be a Muslim and, you know, part of the community. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Beautiful statement. I am American. Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm oh, American. Mm. <laughs> I swear I'm not trying to make this controversial, but <laughs> I somewhat disagree because I'm first Afghan then I would say I'm American. Yeah, so I do yeah, identify okay. as Syrian first. And so what is America? So for me, that identity, because I grew up not feeling like a minority. And I was always proud American. I didn't talk about my Syrian heritage. I wasn't familiar with it. And then the last decade, it was like, whoa, I kind of whitewashed my history to be the proud American to fit in. And everyone was like, if you took off your scarf, you'd be just another white girl. Mm. It's just, there's a battle. Like, I'm proud American, but it's like, what does American mean right now? Yeah. With everything that's happening. As a Muslim who just happens to be black in America, I've never not known this to be my country. Because yes. that's what this country was founded yep. on. That's my Being country. able to be who you are. Having the freedom to be that and not feel persecuted. And so, yeah, that's how I live my life. And I'm not going to let anybody force me or talk me into thinking differently. Okay. So who wants to have coffee and continue this conversation? Uh, yeah, let's go to Starbucks. <laughs> I love how you always bring up another side to it. It's great, it's great. So I have a question for you. You've directed every single episode of Spectrum. How do you go about finding out like what prompts to ask. Yeah, how do you do that justice? A lot of research goes into these episodes. We try to meet with people from the group mm. um, to help us come up with the prompts. We also ask you for some prompts. The way to do that is you follow us on Instagram. That's the way. And when we ask you for prompts for certain groups, then you can contribute. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you around. And uh, enjoy all the rest of the, the Spectrum episodes to come forever and ever and ever. Forever! See ya. So as expected, no two people saw 100% the exact same way for every single question that was thrown at them. And I just think that this is how it's going to be across the board. And, you know, sometimes there are differences in religious opinion, like what does it mean to be a uh, Muslim? And if you're not doing this and you're not a real Muslim, or if you believe this and you're not a real Muslim and what really came up in this video is that everybody's on a different part of the the spectrum and because they may commit sin or because they may not have full understanding of of something or because they may not necessarily wear uh, a headscarf or dress you know in the most modest way that you can dress ever it does negate the fact that they're Muslim and the one of the biggest points that came up too was can you be uh, a Muslim and be part of the LGBT community. And the vast majority of them on the spectrum were like, I, I think actually all of them were like, yes, you can. You can be part of the LGBT uh, community and still be Muslim. You can be anything and Muslim. And it's just a conversation of lifestyle and lifestyle choices. And yes, Islam does 
uh, say that heterosexual relations are the natural way, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that a person cannot be Muslim because they are in a homosexual relationship or bisexual relationship. That was very interesting. I honestly thought that point would be, you know, very, very, very controversial. I'd have, you know, see the people speaking so heavily against it. But when they broke it down, like, you know, people are still people dealing with whatever they're dealing with. And there's no way in Islam or the Quran that um, says that they can't pray, they can't come to a masjid and and worship. You know that they that they're just not Muslim at all, and that's it. Kick them out, mistreat them, treat them unfairly, spit on them. When no, they're they're still people too. And the other point that came up was about the uh, hijab. Should that be mandatory or that the, the covering and all of that? And it was interesting to hear the the dialogue with with that point and everything. A couple of them brought up the, the idea that hijab is it's like a it's a lifestyle. It's it's how you carry yourself. It's your attitude. And that was the first time I've heard that uh, perspective. Like I don't know if the Quran specifically says anything about that. The hijab is a, is a lifestyle. It's how you carry yourself. I literally thought that hijab could refer to a headscarf but it also refers to something that is a physical covering so whether that's a, a robe or you know the style of dress like something physical something tangible i i've never heard the view that it's how you carry yourself hijab applies to that or your attitude so that that honestly is uh, a first so that was also pretty surprising to hear that and then the whole idea of women and men being equal. I also thought that was an interesting point because we saw two sides here. Here we see that biologically men and women are not equal in the sense that they can't do the same things. Men do not give birth. Women do not produce sperm. So if we're looking at it from that context, they're not equal. But if you look at the context of being a believer, being a human being, yeah, they're equal, sure. So I think that question also needs to be defined more. Equality is such a ambiguous and a vague statement. It's equal, but in what way? Like what way are you talking about when you say equal? Like we want equal rights, you know, men and women should be equal. Okay, but equal in what way? Because there's some ways that we're actually not equal. We're just biologically different as humans. And that's why there's a distinction, male and female. It's it's too distinct. So the fact that there's a distinction means that there needs to be a level of inequality there because they're different. So that was probably one of the most important points to, to bring up. Always ask in what way are you referring to? In what way are you talking about when you mention equality? And also if you are an advocate for equality, just got to understand like what does that actually mean when you're advocating it? So it was actually really good when that guy brought up that in the Quran, it says that the, the witness of a man is equal to two women. Uh, I, I don't remember the, the exact wording, but it was like that, like two women equal the witness of one man. And that's in the Quran, it, you know, you still got to acknowledge it. And it's just interesting to see that that dialogue uh, back and forth here, because here here is something that does declare an inequality if you would call it that. So I don't know, maybe we're equal in inequalities, uh, according to Islam anyways. When you look, add up the equalities and the non-equalities, do they equal out? Like, do they balance out? It's like, okay, women, yes, we know women give birth. Male don't give birth. But without the male counterparts, the women can't give birth. So it's like an inequality, but equal at the same time because they sort of balance out. Maybe when you add everything up, it kind of balances out that way. So maybe we are all equal in every single way. It's just an interesting point to, to, to think at. Like maybe this is just sort of like a non-question. One of those concepts that are non-question. It's like, who created God? You can't ask that question. It's just a non-question because that, the who created God would be God, you know? Something to think about though. Something to think about. So if you're somebody out there who maybe has taken the time to add up all the inequalities, 
or all the areas of life anyways and just compare it man and woman with what Islam teaches maybe they all balance out equally like that let me know down below or if not yeah I'm sticking to my uh, point of view <laughs> so yeah those are my thoughts on this video guys I want to hear what you think now sound up down below in the comment section about anything that I mentioned or anything that came up in this episode as always if you enjoyed it leave a like and if it's your first time here Go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Later.